Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm here with my friend Scott Ludwig from uh, Ludwig Saw Shop in Thunder Bay. We're going to talk about sharpening saw blades, when they need uh, sharpening, and how to determine that, and also what happens when a blade does, you know, get dull, and uh, a few other things like that. So Scott, tell me uh, about how I know whether a blade is dull and needs to be sharp. Well, one really good way to know is to actually look at the tooth itself and check the top, the face, and the sides. Okay. Along the top edge right here is where you're going to see sort of a little white line. Mm -hmm. And if you see that, it's dull. Okay. You can feel it with your hand, and if it feels smooth and rounded over, it's probably dull. So what about this blade that I brought in? I mean, it, it kind of feels like it's a little bit dull, but what would you say? It's not overly dull. It still has a bit of an edge on it. You can still grab it, it grabs into your fingers. So that's a good thing. Uh, but another thing to look for is when you're cutting Yeah. and you're putting it through the table saw, if you have to put extra, extra force uh -huh. on the workpiece, that's when you know you're starting to get dull. If you notice a lot of pitch building up on the sides as well, yeah, you yeah, okay. Could, might want to clean it. Oh, yeah, so would you check. recommend a, a, a cleaning your blade with some kind of spray? Or? Definitely clean, especially on the thinner curve blades. Oh, yeah. Uh, as pitch builds up on the side, that takes away from your clearances. So it'll oh, slow you down in the cut yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So is there such a thing as sharpening a blade too much? And how much would a decent blade, you know, how many sharpenings could it endure before you have to replace it? Um, it all depends on the uh, curve of the saw. Oh yeah. Uh, but you can usually get anywhere between five and ten sharpenings out of a blade. Okay. Before you need to uh, replace it. Replace it. Yeah. 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 And and kerf would be. The kerf is the distance between the side of the tooth and the body of the saw. Yeah. So, Scott, this blade here is you know an FS tool blade. I believe it's an eighty uh, tooth. And what I did is I had this on my table saw doing a 45 miter yep. on a piece of birch. And I got all this burning on the wood, and on this side it's all clean, but on this side it's got that pitch. What right. would you... So would this have been the top side? The bottom side? This way. Okay, so that's just excessive rubbing. It was binding underneath there. The workpiece was against the saw, and then this was cut away, so it wasn't touching the saw, it wasn't going to build. So does that mean there was something wrong with the setting? Uh, no, I wouldn't say the settings, it just happened to be the, the thing you were doing. Cutting on a 45 like that is pretty extreme, but it, it will bind in there, right. there will be pressure from the table and the saw. Right, right. So would this mean that uh, maybe I should have used a, a different blade then? Or? It could have been too fine of a tooth, but all blades are job specific. Yeah. So if you're ripping, use a rip blade. If you're cross-cutting, use a cross-cut yeah, blade. Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, right? Yeah. So maybe, normally I see these blades used more for uh, laminates. So maybe it just wasn't the right blade. So, Scott, this is a, a glue line blade. And maybe you could explain what that is, because I, I don't really understand fully what that means and what it's for. So, that these teeth are mostly flat, but on every side of the tooth, there's a tiny 45 degree chamfer. Okay. On each side. Right, right. It makes it a type of triple chip design. So, normally on glue lines, you'll have one triple chip and one flat. And the triple chip sits slightly higher than the flat. And it's made to take a small cut before the raker comes in and takes the rest of the cut. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. On this one specifically, it looks like there's 45 all the way around. I don't often see these blades. Okay. Okay, so there's different kinds it's of glue lines. Yeah, there's yeah, different yeah. kinds of glue lines. There's different kinds of triple chips as well. Okay. So you're gonna do uh, take an image on a on an app with a microscope, is it? Yeah, it's a 500 times zoom microphone. Hooks up to the phone, and you can zoom right into the tooth and see your edge, as you can see along this edge here, and these two smaller edges. There's that 45 degree chamfer I was talking about earlier. Okay. And you can see a little bit of dull on it, but we'll take a picture of this before sharpening. Right. And then after sharpening, and we'll look at the difference. Well, here's my saw blade. 
and you can see that this is not a garden variety sharpening system here. I'm going to do two passes of 0 0.050 millimeter. I'm going to do one pass of 0 0.025 millimeter, and then I'm going to do three spark out passes. It'll give it a nice uh, shine, right. a nice polish. So sort of a, a lighter sharpening than you would do on a really big, on the yeah, on a big sawmill lumber yeah, industry. They, uh, sort of. The lumber stuff doesn't need to be polished; it needs to be sharp. Uh, but the carbide construction is a little bit different as well. Oh, I see. Yeah, but uh, for table saw stuff and the fine woodworking, it's better to polish a blade. More passes, lighter passes make a better finish. I left some checkers on, so if you want, this probe is going to come down and it's going to chuck some angles in the face and stuff like that. All right. Our little probe is checking all of the uh, angles and sizes of that tooth. And the wheel's going to come in and make sure that it's the, the tooth is where it's supposed to be. Wow. Make sure it's not going to grind too far into the gullet as well. Now I understand why you have the door shut. <laughs> yeah, a lot of oil comes out of here. Well, that's oil. Yeah, we use oil grinding because it keeps everything cool. It keeps the uh, carbide dust down and goes to a filter system that we have. Wow. So obviously that oil gets recycled? Yeah, we have a EPCO filtration system. Uh, it's got like five micron filters in there. It goes through our piping system into the big tank over there and filters through. We can recycle the carbide later. Wow. Yeah, it's a nice setup. So you don't charge that much for a sharp a blade sharpening, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's certainly reasonable and man, you're getting your money's worth. Definitely are. Um, we're mainly set up for the sawmill industry. We have a lot of sawmills in the area that we do yeah. work for, but these machines can also do the smaller stuff, the cabinet stuff, so we have no problem wow. doing it. Yeah. And it keeps our machines busy in the meantime. Well, that's really a good service that you provide. Yeah. I had no idea, actually, that oh, yeah? it was this complex and this sophisticated, yeah. you know. Yeah. The technology has definitely changed over the years. We used to grind everything on post grinders that we have over there, but uh, you know, the CNC technology has really right. taken over. Uh, it's made it more efficient, more accurate over the years. It's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And how many machines like this do you have? We have three top and face grinders. CHD270 is the top and face grinder. And then we have two CHF270s, uh, which are the side grinders. So this blade is ready to go. It's a little oily. But it looks like it's got a nice sharp edge, nice polished finish. Cool. We'll clean it up and have a look. All right. Right along the edge here, you can see how everything is nice and square and tight. We'll go back to the original image and we'll compare. And you'll see on the original image that this is quite rounded over, where this, all the corners meet nice and square. Really jagged, sort of uh, angular, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the key to sharpening. When you uh, sharpen carbide, everything has to be nice and square. Yeah. During the sharpening process, I did a thing called spark out, where the wheel wouldn't put any extra grinding pressure down, and it would just um, basically polish the face of the tooth. The more times you do it, the more it polishes, and when you polish a carbide tooth like that, you get a better cutting edge. Well, thank you so much, Scott.
It's uh, an amazing facility you have here, and uh, thanks for your time. No problem, Scott, anytime. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this content, please hit the bell notification. And don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.